All right, boys and girls, what's good? It is your boy BQ. This is the Negative BQ YouTube channel, and this is the return of the Power Moves podcast. This isn't the prettiest graphic in the world that I have up because, honest to God, I was getting ready to start and realize I hadn't created anything for this. <laughs> so uh, I will fix that in the future. But uh, this is Power Moves. I am back uh, talking NWA here on the channel. I once had the podcast. Years and years ago, when they first debuted, I did the first five episodes or so. They kind of decided I really didn't have the time to do it going forward. And then from there, I was kind of a start and stop viewer over the years. Typically try to get the pay-per-views. If I could go to an event, I would. Um, but I was kind of a start and stop watcher as they were going through growing pains. Um, everyone knows the first season is what grabbed everyone. And then pandemic hits. I feel like I run this down every time we're talking NWA, but uh, I promise I won't do it going forward. But obviously when the pandemic hit, as it hit everybody, there were a lot of changes. They decided what they had, the way they presented wrestling, that format wasn't really going to work uh, long-term. So they just made change. You know, they, they, there was just growing pains over the years. How are you going to pre present this product? And I think now they've really, really settled into something that works. Uh, you know, it took several seasons to get here, but ever since they've been on the CW, I think they've been firing on all cylinders. I think it's been a really fun product to watch. It's always been pretty easy to digest, but I think really since the CW era kind of kicked off, they they really went all in on the production quality. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is that they they change it up for every excuse me for every single set of tapings. Uh, you know whether it's I'm trying to think what other cities they were recording in, but whatever city they're in, it looks different. The presentation is different. The entrances are different, and I, I really appreciate about that about them. That's something I've really really liked, really enjoyed so far because I think, um, not, I think I know one of my knocks on impact was that the show just always looks the same. I don't mean production quality wise, because that's just, it's like bad one week, not as bad the next. Okay. The next back to bad. I don't mean from a production quality standpoint, but I mean just the way the show feels the way it looks and feels it just feels like the same exact environment at all times. There's just nothing, you know, it doesn't, it just doesn't switch from week to week where you just feel like you're watching a different show. I don't know really how to explain it, but with NWA, I feel like the vibes are always different. So it's, it's been kind of cool. Um, and I think they made some necessary changes, whether it be the roster, whether, whether it be the broadcast team, they just made some necessary changes where I just think they have a great product right now. Uh, but I guess the point I was trying to make is since they got on CW, they were like, we're going to step up production. We're going to start looking like a television show. Cause you ever heard of dress for the job you want, not the, jo the job you have. When you watch impact. It looks like, Hey, we know we, we, we record on access TV. I mean, we know our, we're broadcasting on X TV access TV. So that's the quality of show we're going to give you from a visual standpoint, not the wrestling and all that, but from, from a visual to where they, and the NWA has really stepped things up. The show looks excellent. It looks great. And um, I initially was trying to, I was kind of fig figuring out how do I want to do this podcast? Do I want to do, cause these are short episodes. Sometimes not a lot happens. So I had to think about it. I said, do I want to do one episode a month where I talk about the four episodes and what stood out? Do I want to try to pair them into groups of two, which could be a possibility going forward. But um, right now I'm going to try to just review each episode as it happens. Um, just, just one by one. So that I'm dropping four episodes a, a week. I mean, a month or five, depending on how many, you know, uh, Tuesdays are in a month, but um, we're going to try to roll with this format so far and talk about it, talk about, the good and the bad, because I have, I'm critical of this company, just like I am impact. I'm probably more critical of impact because 
they've just been around longer as a television product and there's more that I think they could do that they're more capable of where, you know, the NWA, I see them making so many changes from season to season where it's like you truly sit down and say, okay, what's working, what's not working. I've used the example in the past, years and years ago, I've used this example. But in the military, we have what's called an after actions report. And, you know, that's often used, you know, let's just say, you know, you're downrange in wartime, you're doing a, a foot patrol somewhere, you're doing a convoy, um, some kind of mission. But you come back and you, you basically tabletop, okay, what was good? What was bad? What can we improve next time we go out? What do we need to stop doing? Um, so that, that's a very quick, uh, quick way of explaining that. Uh, I always feel like the NWA does something similar to that. So I'm going to make impact comparisons because this is an impact channel for the most part, obviously 99% of the content. I don't get that from impact. I've never got that. I got that from, no, you know what? I'm going to go back because I had said this on my podcast. I got it from the Billy Corrigan era in TNA when Dixie was there. I I did get a, a hint of that from, from tapings to tapings. I saw some changes. The current impact product and the last several years doesn't do that. Everything's good. Everything works, but I do get that vibe from this, um, this version of NWA. So I don't know how accurate I am on that, but I do think I, if I was just a betting man, I would say that um, Billy Corgan and his team, whoever those individuals might be, do sit down from tape, from set, uh, you know, taping to taping. How can we be better next time? I just, I really do truly get that vibe. So uh, we're going to jump into this. I was, I was really considering at first, as I said, doing a, a singular episode to cover all of April. I didn't particularly like last week's episode, not last week, this, this episode, the episode I'm covering, I enjoyed the previous week. It was like the, the season finale of season 17. Maybe I didn't particularly like it. You know, it kind of kicked off with, um, there was a backstage segment with the spectaculars, Ronaldo and, and, um, Eric Smalls and, and Murdoch and Knox. I thought it was horrible. I thought it was, some of the worst acting I just, I just thought it was, I thought it was bad. So I didn't really care about that match. They put together built off that. Um, there's a couple teams I don't really care for like the slime balls. What's one of the kids. I think they're kind of, kind of new. I don't know that final seat. That final episode was super like indie to me, but I don't mean indie, like high flying and flipping. Like it was more like bingo hall indie. I did. I just didn't really care for it. I'm honest, guys. That is that is me. That's how I've built my following. I'm not a mark for anything. I'm a fan of a lot of things, but I'm also a critic. I'm a realist, and that's how I do my podcast. Like I'm not going to sit on here. I have I, I if I speak poorly of a wrestler, say I don't really like this guy or this girl, or I don't think they're good. You have to understand the way I look at it as a fan is that I'm not going to be a fan of everyone on my screen. I don't think, I think a Mark is a fan of every single person on the roster. I think someone who, who's a realist and kind of considers himself maybe more of a casual fan or, you know, I don't know. You're going to be like, okay, I like this guy. I don't like this guy. I like this girl. I don't like this girl. So last week's episode, I'm just being honest from a fan standpoint. I didn't really think it was that good. So I didn't want to talk about it. Um, not to say I have that much against any of those wrestlers. Like, I don't mind Eric Smalls out there. I don't mind Ronaldo. Um, Murdoch bores me a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think who else was kind of involved. As I said, like the slime balls, I, I might have to, is that their name? I, I might have to come around on them a little bit. I don't know if I really like them yet. It, it just was, it just wasn't for me. This episode hit. This was a good one. Um, and the, the episode they have next week, I'm looking forward to as well. Um, I've enjoyed um, uh, Taylor Rising, so she's wrestling next week. I've, I've enjoyed her quite a bit. They used her on Impact a couple times as like terrorizing, and I was like, 
I have more interest in her than, you know, she was like an enhancement talent. I'm like, I think I have more interest in her than the opponent a lot of the time. Like I, there, I can dig her. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of this women's division. I think it's hard to say who has the women's division because you, the best women's division, excuse me, because you look at, you know, WWE's women division and you just have these huge stars. You look at the NXT one and there's a couple girls in there, man, they're, they're just athletic and talented the knockouts has had a history of this excellent division, even though I don't think the division is a good in a good place at the moment. Um, who else are we talking here? AEW is a women division, women's division, I think is better than people give it credit for. Maybe I'm just a fan of a lot of the, the girls in particular. Um, but NWA is, is is just it's really good. You can argue with that that it's the best division. I'm I'm a big fan of a lot of the girls. I'm a big fan of the fact that they managed to string together a very strong tag team division to where you're watching Impact. It's always a one or two team division. They have no clue how to book that shit. They usually do a good good job with the actual champions, the actual belt holders. But as far as like the rest of it, it's it's just, it, I, I don't know. Like I've, I've spoken ad nauseum about that. To where NWA looks like they're trying to book a division. It looks like they're they're trying to have more than more than one or two teams. You feel me on that? And and they did a good job with that with this particular episode. So let's get into this particular episode. And again, it's it's easy to digest. It is an hour long episode. What I've been noticing is that they're getting a little more. They're doing a little more with the wrestling. There wasn't a lot of backstage this episode. There wasn't the interviews. Like it, it's always kind of been built on a lot of talking. And the matches were a lot shorter, especially the early days. The matches were like four or five minutes long. So when they did the the uh, the TV title and it had the 605 time limit, that fit pretty well. You're kind of like, dude, the matches are pretty short anyway. Where now they're going longer. So it's a little hard for them to do the, the TV time, I think. But the matches are going longer. There's, there's, they, they've adjusted in that sense. Uh, what Some of the props that I've given NWA for a long time, and again, I'm going to compare it to Impact here, is that I've always said when they do the opening video segment that NWA is showing you why you need to watch this episode, and Impact's opening segment is telling you why you should have watched last week's episode. And it's not to say you can't use highlights to your advantage, but I think um, this past episode episode of Impact did a better job of early on telling you why you needed to stick around. But NWA has been doing that for a little while. And they'll use highlights if they're necessary, like, hey, this is what happened last week. But they don't give you highlights for the sake of this is what happened last week if there's no, if it has no impact on the current episode. If, if it doesn't tie into it, if it doesn't fit in, they're not like, hey, um, trying to think of a random, I can't think of anyone at the moment. This is what so-and-so did last week. But they're not on the episode, so who cares? So I, I think they're they're good about their highlights. This episode was a little different because it didn't have like Joe Galley's opening monologue, which um, which he does a pretty good job with. But at the same time, I'm open to hearing something different when they kick off a show. And uh, they, you know, they did, they're pretty much for the most part, because the main event was pretty empowered in the King Bees. So they were pretty much uh, playing part of the um, the promo they did last week, which was, which was really good. They're good at what they do. Most women on the indies, if you were to, to, to work that same exact gimmick and cut those same promos, it would probably come off. Uh, cheesy and, and and bad acting, you know what I'm saying? But they they do a really good job. I'm a I am becoming a bigger fan of theirs every single time I see them wrestle, whether whether it's Kenzie, Kylie, and uh, uh, Ella, doesn't matter. I just I'm just becoming a bigger and bigger fan, and that happened with this episode as well. And the main event is going to be those two teams in a two out of three falls match, uh, which I'm a big fan of two out of three falls. I don't know why. I don't like particularly long wrestling matches, but there's something about just two or two out of three falls. that's always a gimmick I've, I've, I've kind of um, dug, but I, I preferred what they did here to the Joe Galley opening segments, even though he does a good, pretty decent job. Like I said, 
I prefer the way that the way that they kicked off this episode. The one weakness I think that they have and have had is is the graphics, the match graphics. So the stuff they post on social media is really good. That those graphics are excellent. But as a graphic designer myself, it drives me crazy and I don't know if they do it on purpose. But they say they'll give the match and they'll show the two wrestlers, or three wrestlers, four wrestlers, whatever. And the resolution is different on all the photos, the the color levels. You know, when you color correct and you're doing a graphic, the goal is to make everything come together in harmony. You know, if um, this person's skin tone is is looking different than this person's, you got to find a way to match them a little bit. So I think these match graphics, and I don't know if they do it on purpose because they've they've always had a bit of a old schoolish, indie-ish type of look to them. But they've they've updated so much within the company that um, I just I don't know I don't know if it's done on purpose at this point. I have no idea, but I don't think they look good. Uh, I feel like I could do a much better job for you. But the uh, the rest of the graphics they do are good. I do think they need to switch up the photos as well. Like it's the same photos of the wrestler. Like Natalia Markova, use they have the same fucking photo every time she wrestles. It's the same picture for forever. Some some of the wrestler, I'm trying to think. Tom Latimer, it's like the same photos. Like surely you guys are doing photo shoots at each set of tapings, right? So I think we get. I think it's time to switch that stuff up a, a little bit. NWA, especially for me when I try to do these graphics. I'm so limited in the pictures that I can use because there's just not a lot out there for, for these people. So I got to um, really think outside the box and, and all that good shit. So um, as I said, every episode looks different for these guys. The crowd looked excellent. Excellent. I think, is this, was this hard times? Cause I know they're, they're breaking pay-per-views into like a couple episodes and they mentioned it hard times at the beginning of the show. And I thought that Dothan, Alabama was hard times, but they didn't really say it again. But there was a lot of people there. There was a lot of people. It was a, it was a great visual. It was very easy on the eyes. And they kicked it off with Colby Carino versus Joe Alonzo. Junior heavyweight title match. Colby Carino is the champion. These are both really talented guys. They had a pretty good match at uh, Sawin. I think it was Falls Count Anywhere, if I remember correctly. My only knock was that they were wrestling in a lot of parts of the arena where the fans couldn't see what was going on. But other than that, I thought they they put on a good match. And the reason these junior heavyweight matches stand out is that it's not like the rest of the show. You're watching AEW Dynamite, and everyone is flipping and rolling and doing all sorts of shit. Doesn't matter how big they are. Impact does a pretty good job with, hey, X Division be the X Division. Everyone else be everyone else. But NWA probably does the best job of that. Separating their junior heavyweights from the others. And they said on commentary here, like, this is their world title, the junior heavyweights. So they they place some you know importance on the belt. So I appreciated that. But that's why they stand out. That's why the junior heavyweight matches stand out because they're not like anything else that they do. It's like WCW. When WCW got the cruiserweights over and they were doing their thing, they are flipping and diving, and then when they're over, the bigger wrestlers wrestle bigger style. So I appreciate that as a fan. 44 years old, that's the way I like to watch wrestling. It's, this, uh, it was excellent. This match was very, very good. If you're listening to my review just because you like my reviews, but you don't really watch NWA, I think downloading the CW app and watching this one is very much worth it. It did it did end with a ref bump. So Joe Lonzo has never been, a, been able to beat Colby Carino. It ended with a ref bump, nut shot, and then, uh, excuse me, Joe Alonzo hitting the stroke, which is a full Nelson face buster. And um, he gets the title. We got a new champion. Um. They don't. They haven't. They don't do a whole lot of title changes in, in, in the NWA. So uh, this was this was kind of a kind of a nice one. But they got a couple of people in this division who can like really go. 
after this, we got a uh, women's tag team match. La Rosa Negra returning along with Ruthie J versus Tiffany Nieves and Reka Tahaka. As I said at the top of the show, they do a good job of trying to actually have a women's tag team division. It's not just, they very easily, when Pretty Empowered were the champions, could have just had them be the champions and then it'd be like a one person division. I mean, one team division. But they find a way to pair up the women that they have to where it's not super random. Like, I think this was the first time they, the, both of these guys, both these teams teamed together, but they worked, right? Like they fit. They didn't feel super fucking random to where what we see on Impact. They do a much better job of booking their tag team division. And I think the people, the good people at TNA need to pay closer attention to that. So La Rosa Negra, if you don't remember her, <laughs> she's been on NWA before, but she was the one that, um, I'm not going to rehash stuff, but it had the issue with Tessa Blanchard back in the day. I'm not going to rehash that. And then Ruthie J, I've I've spoken about her before. She is excellent. She, um, she can go places. Like she can go places much bigger than NWA ultimately. I think, but she's very very good. Like they found a real gem with her. She's very athletic. She's very very impressive. I enjoy her. Her matches quite a bit. Tiffany Nieves, I'm becoming becoming a fan of absolutely more and more when I see her. Got a chance to kind of chop it up with her in Indianapolis at the uh, Squared Circle Expo and uh, liked her even more. And um, as a Puerto Rican, we got a co- couple of Puerto Ricans in this match with La Rosa Negra and uh, Tiffany Nieves. So I think that's um, that's pretty cool. But she's another one that I know she does like OVW, I think Mission Pro. Um, she, she does a lot. Like she's, she's got a lot going on and she's successful in these areas too. And, and this is someone you can really do something with, I think in the future, she had a match on impact once upon a time, this OVW showcase match. And I I think she actually won, but it was the debut killer Kelly. I think killer Kelly like choked her out after the match. Uh, and and it was kind of disappointing because I wanted to see her and the other girl go. I just don't remember who the hell her opponent was. I remember. Tom Hannafin pissing me off because he was calling her Tiffany Neves. And um, I was just like fucking white people. I and I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean that in a racist way, man. But I just um I have some friends that don't give a shit about Hispanic last names or how to pronounce them properly, and it always upsets me so much. Uh, Rabbit Tahaka, like I I've never find found her to be particularly good. They say she's six feet tall, it's like she doesn't look six feet. Like, I didn't feel like she towered the other wrestlers, you know? I could be totally wrong. Maybe all these girls are tall. But I don't feel like she's that tall. I don't think that's her shoot height. I could be totally wrong. Um, I've never been a big fan. This didn't do much either way for me. By no means am I like, am I like oh, I don't ever want to see her wrestle again. Like, she's, she's all right. But I think I've because I've grown to really like Tiffany and they were kind of like teasing dissension in here and and not being able to have any cohesion cohesion. I just kind of like started straying away from her and and kind of push but like pushing for Tiffany at the same time and pushing for her team to win. But um it was a good match. They got a lot of time here. Uh, a lot of time with women's tag matches. As much as they've talked about women's revolutions and evolutions and a lot of women's matches, regardless of company, still don't get a lot of time in the ring. And, you know, they, they had a lot of time here. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. But as I said a couple times in the show already, they make an actual effort to have a women's tag team division. And, uh, and again, they got time. La Rosa Negra ended up getting the pin. I believe she she pinned Reka Tahaka at the end. She did a coqui splash. <laughs> I, I've never heard that, you know, they say the coqui splash. The coqui in Puerto Rico, C-O-Q-U-I, is like a little tiny miniature fucking frog. That I mean, they're just, I don't know what to, they're the size of like, maybe those like pink erasers you use, like you used in, in school. Like the, they were kind of like, um, I can't think what shape shape I'm talking about because it's been so far removed from being in that stage of my life. But you know what I'm saying? The big pink erasers. 
they're about they're about that size. There's little tiny fucking frogs, and they're all over at nighttime. And you just hear them at night, and they go cookie, cookie, cookie. But it's musical. So you're able to sleep to it. It's not something that like keeps you up at night. I haven't been to PR since probably 2001. It's it's been a minute. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm, I remember as a kid, especially going outside and looking for them. Um, but I, but I thought that was a, a cool name and it's a, it's a frog splash, but it's, it's more, it's more like D'Lo Brown's top rope splash, but it looks painful. Like it, it's a, it's an excellent move. She's very good. Um, I can see her and Ruthie J competing here for the titles here very, very soon. Magic Jake Dumas took on Spectacular Slade. This was, this was cool, too. Slade is, I think they were saying he's hearing impaired. I never heard that before. That's where he wears the, the headgear. I thought the whole angle where they were putting the Spectaculars 2.0 was kind of a little bit annoying. <laughs> it was just kind of weird. But at the same time, I appreciated that they went for it. Like other companies wouldn't have done an angle like that. NWA does not give a shit. That's one of the cool things about them. They don't care what other people are doing. They're not like, I, I knock TNA for this all the time because they see WWE do something or AEW, like they try to do their version of it. You know what I'm saying? Like NWA doesn't do that. They just, they're on their own island and, and Billy Corgan does what he wants to do. They're not sitting there doing contract signings and, you know, silly backstage fights and, you know, um, there was one backstage interview this episode, but, but for the most part, this was really wrestling heavy, but yeah, magic Jake. I like magic and Jake a lot. Uh, we met him. Ooh, when was that? It was in St. Louis and, um, we like him a lot. My daughter, my daughter liked him a lot too. So we're we're a fan of him, and um, but yeah, Slade is really he's pretty impressive in the ring. He he's very good. He definitely adds a different dynamic to the spectaculars that makes him a little more a little more watchable, I guess. And it helps having a partner that that can go to where like you know you're not counting on Rolando, who's basically a comedy character. I was disappointed that CJ wasn't out there. Um, met CJ once and. There's certain women you meet in in wrestling, uh, wrestlers, I should, you know, wrestlers when you're doing conventions, whatever. There's some who that you see them in person and you're like, oh, they're not, they're not as pretty as I thought they were. CJ is the complete opposite. She's gorgeous in person. She still, you know, still looks good on on TV as well. But yeah, it, be- absolutely beautiful in person. And I've heard she's a great, a great person as well, a great individual. So I was disappointed she wasn't out there. Uh, it was just Magic Jake by himself. Slade came out, and they said he looked like he put on 10 pounds of muscle. And honest to God, I thought the same thing before they even said anything. I was like, he looks he looks pretty good. And this was a, this was a pretty decent match. It ultimately ended. Uh, Rolando interfered. They do say he has his manager's license, even though he is a wrestler. Um, and that's one thing, too. If you guys don't really watch this product, this is not like AEW that brings 10 people out to the ringside with them. You have to have your manager's license. It's old school, you know? And some of the wrestlers do. And it does make for when there is a run-in, it makes it a little more interesting because, like, so, for instance, um, Kenzie, I think it was Kenzie Page. A couple, yeah, Kenzie Page did a run-in a few weeks ago to where she doesn't have her manager's license, so it's like she has to run out there real quick hoping the referee distracted and, and do what they do and then bounce. You know what I mean? So, so um, I like that aspect about the show. But, uh, yeah, Rolando interfered. And then Slade hit an avalanche like Celtic cross, like what Seamus used to do or maybe still does. I don't really know. I don't follow that company that so much. But off the second rope, very cool gets the win. I'm sure we're going to see Magic Inc. and uh, Spectaculars 2.0 here pretty soon. And then the main event was the King B's two out of three falls match against Pretty Empowered. Pretty Empowered is a great act. 
King Bees have come in and they, they've they've been very good in their role. Won the titles real quick. But pretty empowered is the are the stars here. And God, without trying to sound too shallow, I, I, I hope I'm not I think I'm stating the obvious, and I think they'd probably be the first ones I tell you, but when the, the when the team formed, like they were they were overweight. Okay. That's not saying anything is wrong with that. Like, please do not twist my words. I'm just stating the obvious. They have all three worked very hard uh, at their look, their physique. And I think they're better in the ring for it. You know, Kenzie Page is, is I mean, as a champion, really good. When she beat Camille, I was kind of like, man, that's who you want to pass the torch to. But every time I see her, I'm like more impressed with her. Uh, Kaylee, or Kylie Page, I was going to say Kaylee, that's my daughter's name. Kylie Page is really good as well. She's very hot too. If I was if I was uh, single and fucking 25 years younger, I might be stalking her at the shows. Uh, but she's she's getting she's really good too. And then Ella Envy looked great this episode. Like so she's clearly working on herself too. She's still a thicker girl, but like she's she just looked more muscular this episode. She looked leaner. Like she looked she looked really good. I mean the the three of them the the commitment they have put into their appearance and knowing what their spot is on the card and that they're heavily relied on in the women's division. You know, they're, it's a joy to watch them. Their gimmick is a lot of fun. I was really pulling for them in this match. Not that the King bees, um, aren't impressive, you know, Danny B and charity King, that they're not good in their own right. Cause they are a very good team and show, and it shows a company like TNA. You just have to search the Indies a little bit and you can probably find some teams. Damn it. Um, even though they're they're very good in their own right, I think the the division is best off when Pretty Empowered has all the belts. They're the champions. They're just they're a great act. As I said, you can use this same act in the indies, and some girls would not be able to pull it off like these three these three do. They're just very good. And I stand corrected because at first I was like, I don't know what they're doing with these girls. I don't know what they see when see them. I don't know why they're pushing them. They're very, very good. Um, I know Kenzie Page wasn't in this match, but I've said this before. If she wants to go to the next level, in my opinion, as a fan and as a podcaster, she needs to get rid of the cutter because everyone does that. And she needs to find a finisher that no one else is doing. That's what's going to get her to the next level, I think. So whenever she has that opponent who she's really struggling with and the cutter doesn't win, bust out that, you know, debut that new move win. And I think you're, you're going to see her get to the next level, but this was a two out of three falls match. The initial fall was about five or six seconds into the match where I don't remember which of the King bees. I think it was, um, charity King. I could be wrong. She rolled up Ella Envy, I believe, very quickly. So you get that first fall. And then they had a very good match. After that, ultimately, Ella Envy hits, hits uh, I think it was, yeah, it was, she hits Danny B with a fall away slam. And then uh, Kylie Page does a you know, running drop kick type of thing in the corner, beats her. Another thing I appreciate about NWA, I appreciate it about TNA as well. It doesn't take 50 moves to beat someone like AW does to where you're damn near shooting them in the chest to beat them. I love logical wrestling. Like, okay, they hit them with a couple of great moves. They weren't ready for it. It wins. Like they could, they protect their finishers very well as also. So, um, we're tied up at one and one, one and one at this point. And I thought pretty empowering at the titles back just because they look kind of goofy on that first fall. I thought they were getting the belts back. I was really disappointed. They lost here because charity King ends up hitting the King's kiss, basically a front slam. I'm trying to think who does it male wise somewhere. Uh, I think it's Mark Henry's world's strongest slam. I think it's the same move, right? I believe it is, but uh, she hits that for the win. 
and they're still the champions. I was so I was I was disappointed because I, again I, th- I just think pretty empowered is a champion's work. Um, but if I had to guess, the King Bees are gonna take on La Rosa Negra and Ruthie J here soon. I have to believe so. I'm trying to think what are, you know who else could be out there. Um, you know, Markova and Taylor Rising. I don't know if Miss Kate has a partner right now since M95 is in the thing. They got some intriguing girls. They have some, they have some talented girls. Um, but if I had to guess, that's the next the next feud, and then it'll be interesting to see what they do with Pretty Empowered. Are they just going to kind of be in Kenzie Page's corner? Well, I guess they can be in their corner in a match, but I I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. <coughs> excuse me. Woo! It's, it's interesting to see what they do. That is going to do it for me. This is the um the return at NWA Power Moves. I hope you guys dug it. Uh, hopefully we'll improve it going forward because this is my first podcast covering them in quite some time. And the format is a little different than than Impact because it's a shorter show. There's um, it's just a different style of wrestling, a different style of booking. You know, with Impact, there's usually a little bit more to talk about. There's there's rumors and news and things like that. Uh, so so it, it's just a different show, but. Uh, I thought they put on a good show this week. I think the card next week looks really good. I don't remember off the bat. I think we getting Tom Latimer, and Kerry Morton. I think it's one of them. Uh, I think we're getting um, Taylor Rising against. Damn, I can't quite remember who it is. But I, I wanted to say let, next week's show looks really good as well. So, although I thought the Oh, uh, uh, that's right. We're getting uh, Aaron Stevens' team. My God, the name is escaping me at the moment. Uh, Blunt Force Trauma against uh, Tim Storm and a mystery partner. I thought that Tim Storm and Jack Stain should have won the titles at the beginning of last season. I thought that was the way to kick things off on CW. I would have changed the titles because I think the BFT story is getting a little redundant at this point. No, you know what? Oh my God, I'm tripping here because BFT's wrestling. That's not who they're. No, they're they're facing a uh, Kratos and old boy. Because I, I, that's man, I'm tripping here. It's getting a little late. I'm sorry. My point is, I think next week next week's episode looks pretty solid. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. I didn't think they ended the previous season on the highest note, but um, I think they got a good one coming. So. Thanks for checking me out, folks. I'm your boy, BQ. I'll be back uh, soon to review Impact, and we'll talk to you very soon. Peace.